States Cavalry was faced with an acute shortage of horses because of a border gang that specialized in rustling. Riding in this buggy is the man who helped the cavalry break up the gang and bring the Army remount corrals to a full quota of horses. Rex Allen stars as the Frontier Doctor. <laughs> On November 16, 1901, Charlie Breen, leader of the famous Breen Gang, was captured and sentenced to the penitentiary for five years. After serving two years of his sentence, I was called in as a member of the prison hospital staff to examine him. I found that Breen's health was failing. What's on your mind, Charlie? Oh, Warden. No doubt Doc Baxter's told you about my bad heart. Yes, he has. And that I'll probably be dead within six months. That's why I moved you to the hospital. Uh, can I sit down? Sure, go ahead. Well, you see, if it's just a question of time until I kick off, uh, I'd like to get even with some of the old gang that double-crossed me. They not only left me to die when I was wounded, but they stole every cent I ever had. Go on. Well, according to the papers, they're still killing and rustling and making things tougher than ever. And I got a plan to put a stop to all that. And you can help me do a patriotic duty to the government. How? By arranging a meeting with the governor. Then I can tell him myself how my plan would work. Because of a heart condition, the notorious gang leader, Charlie Breen, has been granted a reprieve today by the territorial governor, Hiram Willits, on a recommendation of Peter Crown, the warden of the penitentiary, Dr. Bill Baxter. And the sheriff of Rising Springs. That puts me in a spot, too. I hope the governor knows what he's doing. It's not a new idea, Sheriff, fighting fire with fire. Charlie Breen claims that he wants to help the authorities round up his old gang before he dies. And this new leader, this gringo Pete, has given the cavalry and the ranchers more trouble than he ever did. I sure hope Charlie can help us catch him. But Charlie Breen doing undercover work for the government. That'll make screaming headlines all over the country. You can keep that. I'll see you later. <laughs> The matter, Gringo? You know what the matter is. It's Charlie. Margarita, he's not gonna like this. He's still crazy about you. I've got something to say about that, too. What you don't understand, Gringo, is that when a woman is through, she's through. Sure. Charlie and I loved each other once. That was a long time ago. But you can never go back. How can a man think when you do that? You never could think straight, Gringo. Draw. No, Charlie. It was my fault. I heard something about this in prison. Like a chump, I didn't believe it. Well, it's true. I love him. And why shouldn't I? I'm still young. I have my whole life ahead of me. What did you expect me to do? Now get out of here, you crummy half-breed. The next time I find you here, I'll kill you and your sweetheart. Go on. I got nothing against you, Gringo. 
I just wanted to show you. Never trust a woman. I'm through with her. If you want her, she's all yours. I don't want her, Charlie. I need money more than I need a woman. I'll stay with you if you still want me. If you don't, I'll ride back across the border. Maybe join Chacon. Nah, nah. You stay with me. I'll need you. You'd be seeing me again, did you, Chekhov? With you, Charlie, nothing's impossible. <laughs> How did you manage it? Sit down before you fall off your feet laughing. Imagine, the U.S. Cavalry is using me as the undercover man to round up my own gang. <laughs> <laughs> While I was in the penitentiary, I heard you were on the market for horses. Charlie, you hear everything. Don't tell me you're planning a little revolution down there. Let's call it a uh, change of government. <laughs> a down payment, amigo, on 500 head. It'll cost you another 10,000, Chacon. You'll get it. The Mexican mines are only too willing to contribute to Augustine Chacon's campaign. Now, when may I expect delivery? I'll let you know. Where can I get in touch with you? I'll be right here. I'll be there as soon as I can round up the horses. Then I'll let you pay me off in gold before we drive the horses across the Rio Grande. With all that money, amigo, you must be thinking of becoming a Mexican citizen, see? Maybe. Hasta la vista, amigo. I'll get in touch with you. See. <clears throat> now that you know who I am, you can understand why I'm so anxious about Charlie Breen being out of prison. The newspaper said you recommended it. It's true, I did. Charlie's days are numbered. So are mine. Why? What have you got to do with it? I used to be Charlie Breen's girl once. Then he was away so long. I found Gringo Pete more attractive. Gringo Pete? You mean his lieutenant? That hombre, if there ever was one. I can understand why Charlie would be on the warpath. But that's your personal business. He's trying to help us, the authorities. You don't really believe that, do you, Doctor? He'll go right on rustling, robbing, and killing like he always did. Why do you say that? Because he never quit. All the while he was in prison, he was telling the gang what to do and how to do it. How could he? He found a way to get messages to Gringo Pete regularly. Oh, he planned everything. Are you sure of that? Or are you just trying to protect yourself? I'm trying to protect myself by telling the truth. Look, I know names, dates, places. Right now he's rustling 500 head of horses for Augustine Chacon, the Mexican bandit. Charlie's supposed to be helping the government. That's a joke. I'll take that up with the sheriff right away. Here, you better get out of here. Thanks for the information. Remember, I've got plenty of it. And some in writing, too. Just leaving. I'm going to ride down and see if it's clear. Why, well, that's Margarita. She's been to see the doctor. She's not sick. You know anything about that, Gringo? No. Get after her, Mac. Bring her to the hideout.
know, Doc. Charlie, I don't believe I know your friend. I, uh, been having a little shortness of breath. I'm gonna need all my strength. I'm gonna have some big news for you real soon. I wonder if you got something to help me. You, uh, weren't going anywhere, were you? No, it wasn't important. Come on in, we'll have a look. Frankly, Charlie, you're not doing too well. You told me that a couple of weeks ago. There must be something you can do for me. There is. Put you in the hospital. I got a better idea. Maybe I need my own personal doctor, one who knows about my trouble. What do you mean by that? I think you better stick with me for a while, until I get the information you wanted. Charlie, can I talk to you alone for a minute? It's important. I told you you had six months to live. I meant it. I got you out of prison. And the governor took my word for it that you'd work with the authorities. Now you're making a fool out of all of us, yourself included. You're not interfering with my plans. Margarita's been talking, hasn't she? Search him. We're taking Dr. Bill along with us, just to keep me in good health. Now, wait a minute. Do you realize that I have my own patients, that I'm the only Keeping doctor... Keeping me alive is your most important job from now on. The bag, come on. Let's go. Make you wish it. Oh, leave her alone. I'll leave her alone when she talks. This dame is having to get us both in the penitentiary. This girl's in bad shape. She's got a compound fracture. I'll have to get her to the hospital and put that arm in a cast. Oh, no, you don't. I can't take care of her here. I don't have any medical supplies. You'll treat the both of us here. You got enough stuff in that black bag of yours. Get it. Charlie, what's the use of all this? Why don't you let me take her to the hospital? You're gonna lose either way, either by the law or heart failure. <laughs> You're not the only doctor in the world. There might be a good one in Mexico, one who can cure heart disease. Maybe I'll live longer than you will. Come on, you talk. Tell me what you told him, or I'll twist that arm of yours again. <laughs> or you won't. Margarita, I got to set that bone. It's gonna hurt. I wanna put you to sleep for a little while. Don't think you're putting anything over on me. I know why you really wanna put her to sleep. Go ahead and scream and holler and get yourself all worked up. Maybe your heart will stop now. All right, go all right. Knock her out, but she'll wake up eventually. And when she does, I'll find out what she told you. Or maybe you want to tell me. I want you to help me. Take hold of her hand, gently. Pull it straight out. Easy. Come on, gringo. Let's get out of here. We got a ride. Mac, keep an eye on these two. Make sure the doctor doesn't leave. Come on, gringo. Maybe 400 head. They promised you corn 500 head. It's not going to be easy, Charlie. We've emptied almost every corral in this territory. Well, how about the Army Remount Station? It's about 100 head there. Charlie, you're not going to take a chance on it. Check corn is willing to pay a big bonus for 500 head, not 400. And he's got the goal to do it. All right, Charlie, if you say so. Let's see how many soldiers are guarding that cavalry corral. Then we'll work it up from the. Charlie, let's go back up. I'll be all right in a minute. I'm just tired. Come on.
Don't worry, Margarita. I'll keep Charlie away from you. I'm so tired, Doc. I can't hardly keep my eyes open. You gotta give me something to pep me up. Wouldn't do much good. Listen, I got important work to do. I gotta be on my toes. I said, give me something, quick. Take a couple of these and a glass of water. Keep you awake. Wait a minute. You take them first, Doc. I don't need them. I said take them first. All right. Now it's my turn. I'll be all right in a minute. We'll pick up the cavalry horses and drive them out to the rest of the herd. That'll make 500 head all right. How are we going to get them to Jacone? He told me where he'd be. We'll take the old river bottom trail along the Sonora Flats. The cavalry will never catch up to us. That medicine sure makes me feel better. You got to take these along. Let's go. You know, I'm not through with her yet, Doc. Leave a couple of men here to see they don't leave. You know? You'll need some more of these for me, Doc. I feel like a million. It's just a stimulant. It'll wear off in a couple of hours. <laughs> I'm not worried. There'll be plenty of stimulation in Mexico. Hasta la vista. I'll be back. Adios. Gracias. Looks like you've got a friend. Si. What if he does not come back from the raid? I think I know how we can get out of here. I need you to help me. Todo lo que quiere, doctor. I'll heat some water. Ringo. I think we better handle this ourselves, and as quietly as possible. Tell the men as soon as we break the horses loose to head them on the run for the Mesa. Come on, let's go. Come over here, both of you. That arm's infected and I'm gonna have to operate. I'll need some help. Here, hold this. Now, this is chloroform. I want you to hold this over her mouth and nose and drip it on slowly. Do you understand? Ready, Margarita? Yes, doctor. and a cavalry officer from the army post had been sent out as scouts to see if they could pick up a trace of the stolen horses. Doc, 
Doc, what happened? Charlie Breen and Gringo Pete are driving a bunch of stolen horses toward the border. They're taking the river trail along the Sonora Flats. Where's your patrol officer? About a half a mile over the rise. And you see that this girl gets into the Ford Hospital right away? Take care of that orderly and pass the word to the sergeant to ride west over the pass with the men. Go along with him, Margarita. You'll be all right now. I'll see you later. Sure, Chacon has got the money before that herd reaches the river. There they are. My men should be coming through from the other side any time now. It's Charlie and Gringo. Where are the horses, amigo? You can see the dust from here. They'll be coming down that draw as soon as we get the gold. Hand them four bags. Half that's mine, Charlie. So it is, Gringo. There's one of them you won't have to worry about. Thanks, Chicken. Tell your men to ride up and bring the horses down across the river. Tragamos, caballo. Ah, que caballo. Charlie Breen had finally paid for the reign of terror he organized on the frontier. The rest of his men had been rounded up by the cavalry and sentenced to long terms in prison. As for Margarita, she was convicted as an accessory, but for the help she gave the authorities, she was paroled in the custody of the sheriff. You know, Bill, I've never had a woman paroled in my custody before. Maybe with that arm of her, she ought to still be in the hospital. That arm will be all right. You mind if I make a suggestion? I'll go ahead. I feel I owe her a debt. She saved my life. Knowing you're kind of bashful around women, I'd like to go see Judge Davis and ask him to parole her in my custody. But you got enough troubles of your own? I suppose I have, but I'd like to see her get a new start in life, and maybe I can help her. Well, that's all right with me, Doc. I hope the judge will go along with you. I think he will. Margarita did make complete recovery and did start a new life in California. Augustine Chacon, the Mexican bandit, was sentenced to be hanged, a sentence which was carried out. As for Charlie Breen, Gringo Pete, and Augustine Chacon, 
they proved once again that outlaws usually pay with their lives when they reach for crooked money.